You're making me lazy. I'm never gonna have to move. Those pins are locked in. Today, we're on a road trip. I've done the chores. I've lost the dog. Maggie! Come on. All right, Maggie's got a couple of hours in the caravan until Joe gets back while we hit the motorway and go up north. So we'll get some miles under our belt first and then I'll explain what we're doing today. Now, Black Tracker, the company who uh, we've bought all of our tractor implements from, and they, of course, are the ones who are supplying our tractor um, on loan at the moment as well. Now, they've been watching me struggle, or uh, at least push the, the limits of the tractor, with moving things around, bulky things, heavy things, and they think they have got a solution. So they've invited me up today to have a play on something new, and maybe even look at getting one on the farm soon. Here we go. Right, we're here at Black Track and we're gonna be looking at these Norcar loaders, which are gonna be far more suited to pallets and unloading lorries and all sorts. So this is that. What's the difference between that and a mini telehandler? Mini telehandler is just a different, make, different... weight as well. Okay. Weight on the ground. Yeah. The way that obviously this steers, this turns, which we'll show you outside, turns in the middle. Uh, okay, like a dumper. Yes, on that, that central pin there. Yeah. Oh, I see, so you're sat right at the back. You're sat right yeah, at the yeah. back rather than in the middle. So, yeah. And what's the main main use for one of these? Like, who, who's using them? In like yards and factories, or is it more construction? Or? Yeah, construction. There's getting into tights because they can turn on as well. Beef beast, really. I mean, the, the turning circle on them is so so yeah. tight. So, if you've got a, a, a narrow uh, alley to go down or whatever, and you want to turn and, and get a pallet and come back out again, yeah, because they're, they're quite narrow as a machine, aren't they? Yes, so it's unlike a conventional forklift where you're turning the rear. Yes, yes. it's not like yeah. that. Okay. Um, a lot of sort of hall spaces where they're in and out of narrow stables, yeah, again, oh, because you could put a there. muck bucket on the front, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah very easy to, to use. We had one of these at my place I used to work for getting in, we just had a tow ball on the front for getting in and out and picking up the, the trailers, but you'd have trailers here and trailers there, yeah. and you'd just go in, put the tow ball underneath and pull the trailer out into position and they're perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. They're like a helicopter pilot in there. Yeah. The main yeah. two you would be using are the, that's your boom out, that's your boom in. Yeah. And they, these to operate your hydraulics on the front, so if you had like a grab or something, yeah, that's what your buttons here, and that would do. What attachments would you put on one of these? There's a list of about 200. Oh, um, is there? That's your hydraulic port just there. Yeah. Uh, you can do hydraulic grabs, hydraulic bail squeezers, like say your post knockers, um, okay. hydraulic driven hedge cutters. Mm -hmm. And what is the engine? Oh, the boat at 370 diesel. That is an actual bail. <laughs> No, I noticed up at the NEC that they have the inflatable ones yeah, to do all the no, demos. That is <laughs> These are the counterweights. Oh, I see, yeah. And okay. that's your toe, ball, and a pin. We're going to take one of these outside, or we've got another one outside, and see it in person and uh, see what it can do. Um, what are these for? These are buckets. For? The advanced or multi feet and all car. Bigger. Oh, I see, same bracket. Yeah. But they are huge. What's the bail grab? Is that for a. That can, be, that can be tracked to all the all yeah. cars, basically hydraulically. So this is out of the ones we saw inside, this is the middle one? Middle one, yes. Yeah. That's compact, isn't it, when you see the arm in? Yeah. So one of the main things we were talking about in, in that previous video was if we went for a bigger tractor which would give us more low capacity it'd be a nightmare to get in and out and turning around by well, the looks of things this one will, uh, will basically turn around anywhere in the farm it's far more like a telehandler isn't it than a front motor it's... see what i mean how it levels yeah, yeah. it is now that's the beauty of these you can actually you know, put them out a bit so you can see them to the Oh, I see you're further away. Telescopic, yeah. Yeah. Now 
fragile tilts, tilts right back. Uh, now tilts forwards. You're making me lazy. I'm never going to have to move. Those pins are locked in. Yeah, I see. So the I only thing you have to do when, when taking the swap between things, the only thing you have to do manually to release it. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a good capacity as well. Yeah. We've got a bunch of gravel and stuff being delivered soon, so that'll. Yeah. Get right in. You drive, in, drive right into it and then use your boom as well to get it. Yeah. Proper. far easier yeah. for the tractors to get a hang of you know it's kind of self-teaching almost yeah no, yeah they are they're very easy to use and um the, the main thing is just trying to work out you know the tractors it's all pretty straightforward but with that articulation but it does make it easier but it's yeah just, you know. and a lot of like forestry boys as well have the big timber grabs on yeah because yeah. if they're going in the a telehandler in a forest one is a lot bigger and two weighs a lot more yeah and you can weave in and out of trees in one of these. In the arb and the forestry, that's where the steel panels come into, rather than fiberglass. If oh, you are in confined spaces with and... trees and... And what's this? Lunchbox or...? Lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Paperwork. A accident folder. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's hope not. Right, well, we've had our first look at it. Hopefully, all being well, we're going to have Oscar come down to the farm again. Uh, like he did with the tractor on Saturday and give us a full-on demo there. We've got plenty of heavy stuff that's sat that can't be moved at the moment. Well, there we go. That was fun. Great fun. Got to love a new toy. Uh, I, I have no idea how long the loader's going to be with us for, but even if it's only a week, it's certainly going to be a good, uh, well, well used, let's put it that way. We've got all of that fencing that arrived. We've got all the building materials and remember we've got the roof to go on the cabin and i didn't measure it maybe i'll look it up in the paperwork later but the reach on it should get us up high enough that we can put all the roofing sheets on and the trusses and things like that and get them lifted up i'm pretty sure that that's significantly higher than the loader on the tractor but i am super impressed what a beer kit we are being completely spoiled um never did i think that we'd be uh, getting the opportunities we're getting at the moment i'm um, really really uh, grateful for people like Black Track, but without them, we'd be well, we'd either be pooting around on an ancient tractor that was temperamental, and we certainly wouldn't have the ability to, to, ability to do a lot of the stuff we're doing. But you know, it's going to be, uh, I don't want to overuse the word game changer, but certainly having a loader like that in and around both the farm side of things but also the construction is going to be a, a, a big game changer for us and mean that we can safely load and unload things uh, we've obviously got our uh, flatbed trailer now so it means that when we get things picked up which could obviously be lifted on um, with a forklift the other end normally if it's a supplier or if it's something we've bought privately from another farm They've normally got a telehandler kicking around so they can load it on and then we've got now got the ability to transport and unload the other end which is just mind-boggling i never thought we'd have these sort of toys at our disposal please do bear in mind that we always put a lot of thought into anyone that we ever mention on the channel they're always nearly always someone that we've used already um, that might have been as a one-off or it might have been for many years before we actually start promoting them which is why with a little bit of regret, we've always turned down different tool manufacturers. Uh, I've always had Bosch kit, and I think everyone but Bosch has offered to sponsor the channel and send us gazillions of power tools. Um, but I'm trying to stick to my guns. Maybe one day there'll be a reason to get a, a second set of tools, perhaps when we start the main house build. But for now, the last thing I want to do is start replacing tools that I already have, which I love. and majority of the time work just fine but anyway right i'm gonna leave it there because i need fuel and i need a sandwich thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time